Hi, I'm James Randi. Let me tell you a short story, folks. Recently, I was driving on four-lane Broward Boulevard here in Florida alongside the canal. And I noticed a huge box turtle perilously making his way across the road some distance away. The driver ahead of me swerved to avoid the creature, but hardly slowed down. Well, I pulled over. I stopped and lugged the very heavy traveler to the edge of the water. He seemed not to express his thanks to me for his rescue, but he plopped into the canal with what I fancied was a certain degree of relief. It's the kind of thing I often do. I pick up sharp objects I find when walking along the beach, carrying them about with me until I find a suitable place to safely deposit them. For every stranded motorist that I report by telephone to the highway police, there are many others who pass that person by, but I'm well aware of the reason I feel compelled to make such calls. You see, I had a very good teacher, my paternal grandfather, who long ago left us for what he believed would be a far greater adventure, was very important to me as I grew up. He cared a lot. He looked on lying as a grave infraction of proper social behavior, though I will tell you that on one occasion and only one, I deliberately lied to him. I visited him as he was in his last hours, and he asked me if I thought that he was going to meet my grandmother, who had died a few years earlier. I told him that yes, he probably would, though I had no such delusion at all. He just smiled. Whether or not he believed me, I'll never know, but I did this to possibly bring him a bit of comfort in his last moments. I have no regrets about that at all. Gramps was one who would wipe away bits of chewing gum on a park bench because someone may sit in it, he'd explain. Quite unnoticed, he'd pick up and replace a hat that had fallen from a clothing rack in a restaurant. A piece of wire protruding from the fence at the playground would be bent back out of the way by my granddad. I learned a lot from him, watching him as he performed this part of his life. Now, Grandpa wasn't a caretaker or a watchman of any kind. He worked as an electrician. He wasn't employed to pick up after people or to ensure their safety, but was nonetheless getting enormous satisfaction from his small contributions. Together at the beach one day, we found a very old wallet containing two $1 bills and a faded identity card for some chap named Foster. As I expected, my granddad wrapped that wallet up and mailed it off to the address we'd found inside. Two weeks later, it came back with a notification informing us that the owner had moved and had left no forwarding address. Grandpa simply extracted the two dollars and stuck them into a book on the bookshelf. We reluctantly discarded the wallet. Well, the next Sunday morning, I answered the door to find a lady there asking if we would contribute to a worthy charity. Grandpa lit up and retrieved the two dollars from the bookshelf. He handed them to the lady, and as she thanked him, he shook his head. No, 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 that's not mine, he said. It's from Mr. Foster. I'm sure he's glad it's been put to such a good use. And when I dropped that turtle at the canal edge last week, I said, Mr. Foster wishes you a long life. And my grandpa would have smiled, I know. It's the way to go, folks. The world turns a little more smoothly you're just a bit richer, and someone, someplace, may very well notice your good deed and resolve to follow suit. That way, we're all better off. Won't you do something for Mr. Foster? Please, and thank you. We thank you for watching this latest episode of James Randi Speaks. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.